Good morning, Dorla Lejean, real estate agent with Real Broker. It is another gorgeous day in South Louisiana. Guys, if you're not from Louisiana, what you will um, probably gather from some of my posts are that it could be super hot, humid, miserable one day and the next day it could be just cool crisp um it could be pouring down raining and just hot and then be cold cold or chilly so our weather is very i would say erratic just very erratic but today we are lucky enough it almost feels like maybe what being on the coast of california would feel like it's a great day it's a great day um for those of you that don't know my background, I was in education for 20 years before I got into real estate just five and a half short years ago. Um, and I tell you, people who see me now would say that, yes, it looks like I'm successful, but I will tell you, it's not easy. And it wasn't easy. And my very first year in real estate, I netted negative $2,000. Um, but I never would have thought in a million years about quitting because this is what I knew for sure that I loved to work I loved to help people and because of those two things there was no way that I could fail right there's always going to be people no matter what the um, no matter what's going on in the world people have to have housing there will always be people who need to buy a home there will always be people who need to sell a home. And it's as simple as that. And I just remember thinking, there are probably going to be really low lows in this business. There are probably going to be very high highs and everything in between is just going to be what it will be. So, a um, couple of defining moments for me was back when I was 19 and I was in college full time and I was living with my dad and he dropped dead of a massive heart attack when I was 19 years old. I did not know that he had remortgaged our house, which meant that we had to sell it, which then meant we were homeless. We absolutely were homeless. I was in the middle of college, um, going to LSUE, living with my dad. Listen, my life was pretty much easy. It wasn't perfect by any means, but my God, was it easy. And then when he dropped dead of a massive heart attack, I had a decision to make. What I never considered doing was quitting college, never. I wasn't real sure exactly what I was gonna go for, and I'll tell you, I told my kids this, listen, just go, just go. Because I changed my major probably 10 times. Starting in education, circling back to education, ended up graduating in education, but never the thought, never crossed my mind to quit. The semester my dad died was um, the third semester and I was in charge of everything because him and my mom had gotten divorced when I was six. So that meant I was in charge of the selling of the house, selling of the stuff, the secession, all the things and knew nothing about what to do. Um, and so that semester, even though I knew I was never gonna quit college, I flunked out and they put the college put me on um, I forget what you call it I guess probation where you have to sit out a semester and you can't go back you have to just take a break and so I sat out I took a break and I actually went to work at Winn-Dixie and I remember thinking one day there were a couple of older ladies there that were cashiers that were probably in their 60s or 70s and I just remember one day looking at those older ladies and thinking no matter what I do, I'm going to go back to college and I'm going to finish and I'm going to get a degree because I do not want to ever have to, number one, be dependent on someone else. And those older ladies um, had gone through different things. Some were divorced, some their husbands had passed away. Some of them had never worked before in their lives and had to go back and work at Winn-Dixie as cashiers. And I remember thinking, I'm going to do what I need to do to be independent, to be able to support myself. And if and when I do decide to get married, 
I will be able to support myself in no matter what. So I got into education, of course. Um, loved being a teacher. Loved being in the schools. And then at 15 years, I applied for a job as technology supervisor at the school board office and moved to the school board office. When, when listen, when I applied for that job, never thinking in a million years I'd get the job at all. I really didn't feel ready, but I applied for the position basically um, for the practice and ended up getting it and knowing that um, pretty much probably the first or second, third day on the job, I realized I was not an office person. I didn't like being in an office. My office didn't have a window. It was like being in a dungeon. And many days it actually felt like just being in hell because I didn't like being in the office. I missed being in the schools. I missed the teachers. And um, so a couple of epiphanies throughout that five year career, because I knew I had to make it to 20, were just, I kind of got the impression that most people that were there didn't particularly love being there. Um, and it was kind of just disheartening. And so I remember thinking, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get to 20, and I'm gonna do something else. And listen, when I got into real estate, I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it. But thankfully, I fell in love with it. I remember the first day of class, all of the, just everything going on, talking about real estate, the real estate world, something about it just fascinated me. And I just fell in love with it, thank God. And so, defining moments for me were all of the things that I went through to get to this point. It was not easy and it's still not easy. Every day is a new challenge. Absolutely every day is a new challenge. But I always think to myself, even on the worst days when things aren't going right, I could be sitting in that office at that school board office with no window in what I called my dungeon. That's where I could be. So I'm thankful every freaking day to be able to be out and about meeting with buyers, meeting with sellers, where the office, my office, is wherever I have my iPad. That's my office. It's in people's houses. Uh, it's in coffee shops. It's on my back porch lots of days. And thankful beyond belief for the opportunity that I have, have been given. And I think if you're in a position where you're just not happy, where you feel like you're not being challenged, where you feel like there has to be more to life than just this. Um, my number one piece of advice would be start giving back because the more that you give back to people in small, simple ways, it doesn't have to be big. Just be kind to people, treat people well, do things for other people. It will help you feel good about yourself. And if it's just a situation where you are not happy in your job, if you're not trying to buy a house soon, if you're trying to buy a house soon, I would say, do not quit your job. Do not quit your job. Do not change your job until you close on your house. But if you're not planning on buying a house in the next few weeks, months, anytime soon, and you are just miserable, listen, there's more to life. There's more to life. And there's so many opportunities out there. If you're just willing to get out there and, and, and take a chance, listen, the opportunity to fail is always there always but we learn every time we fail i fail every day at things every single day and i learn from them because it's just it's just life that is life it's never going to be perfect y'all have a great friday remember in real estate there are no stupid questions any question as a buyer or a seller or even if you're thinking about getting into real estate i'd love to have a question uh, a conversation with you take care enjoy your weekend and reach out if you need anything